So this is the continuation of lecture one for IE3340, Operational Research. And last time we, we stopped on the discussion of the Gauss-Jordan method. We discussed the Gauss-Jordan method in the steps in, in which you can apply this method to, to find a solution to a set of linear equations. Um, and we stated that the Gauss-Jordan method is very important for this class because it's going to be used as we move forward when we start formulating our linear programming models. The, one of the algorithms that is used to solve linear program models is called the simplex algorithm. And the simplex algorithm used the Gauss-Jordan method. So last time we discussed the elementary row operations that can uh, are part of the Gauss-Jordan method. Um, and the idea of the Gauss-Jordan method is to apply these elementary row operations in a systematic way, such as we can transform this matrix A that represents the um, the coefficients of the decision variables for our set of linear equations, we want to change those coefficients into an identity matrix. Uh, as, and when we perform these elementary row operations with the goal of com converting this original matrix into an identity matrix, after we are done in, with that process, then once we get to this format, we know that we have obtained the solution for the linear system of equations. So last time we also discussed the, this example and the, the lab or that first lab basically ask you to complete this problem. So I, I got you to this point in which I have changed column one and column two into an identity matrix. And then that last column, column three, was missing. Um, so I needed you to complete that for me uh, and submit as your first lab. And this is the final solution. So if you got to this point, then you got the 20 points for the lab. Okay, so the new material for this lecture uh, starts here. We, we're gonna look at the special cases uh, in which you, you, when you apply the Gauss-Jordan method, you're not guaranteed to get an optimal solution. Uh, actually, it's not guaranteed that you're gonna find a, a unique solution for your linear equation uh, all your linear equations that will satisfy all the set of linear equations. So there are some special cases and these are illustrated here. So after the application of the Gauss-Jordan method, linear systems having no solution or an infinite number of solutions can be recognized. So on this first matrix here, we can identify a no solution example because you will see for those cases, you will see that the matrix of the coefficients, uh, if you have a row that is all zeros and the right-hand side is different than zero, then that means that these set of linear equations has no solution. That will satisfy all the equations. So this is a no solution example. For the infinite, infinite solution examples, I don't want you to get confused. There's a lot line of zeros here, but this is different than this because here the right-hand side is also zero. Okay, so these two are different. In this case, you have a negative two on your right-hand side. In this one, you have a zero. So this is like not having a equation here. 
Okay, so for an infinite number, infinite solutions example, basically you see that um, there's a, a value that is different than zero on that third column. And that means that you can enter another, um, that means that you can enter another coefficient into your process and find another solution. And we will talk more about that later this semester. But the idea here is like, you don't get that identity matrix that you're looking for. Uh, you're getting that value on that third column after you have completed the, the process. So in order to understand these concepts uh, clearly, we need to understand what basic variables and solutions to linear equation systems what those concepts are. For any linear system, a variable that appears with a coefficient of one in a single equation and a coefficient of zero in all other equations is called a basic variable. Any variable that is not a basic variable is called, very simple, a non-basic variable. So let the basic variable be the set of basic variables for ax equals b prime, and the set of non-basic variable will be the set of non-basic variables for that same set of equations. The character of the solution for the set of equations depend upon which of the following cases occur. So Case one, if this set of linear equations has at least one row of the form 0, 0, 0, 0, and z, where z is not equal to zero, then as I explained earlier, this set of equations has no solution. So here again, you have this line of zeros on the left side of the matrix, and then you have a non-zero value on your right. If you find that, then that means that you have a no solution. You have no solution for that set. So in the matrix, row zero meets this case one criteria. Variables x1, x2, and x3 are basic. Okay, so x1, x2, and x3 are basic. You can see the format here. And for any linear system, a variable that appears with a coefficient of one in a single equation and a coefficient of zero in all other equations is called a basic variable. So that's the case for x1. You have one here and then zero for the other equations. The same thing happens here. And then you have zero for all other equations. And then here, all zero for the other equations. So those three variables are basic. That's not the case for X4. Variables X1, X2, and X3 are basic variables, while X4 is a non-basic variable. Suppose case one does not apply, and non-basic variable, the set of non-basic variables is empty. Then, the set of linear equations will have a unique solution, which is what you have here. All these variables are basic, x1, x2, and x3. And then you have your identity matrix. So that means that you have a unique solution for your system. So the matrix has a unique solution, the set of basic variables x1, x2, and x3, when the no basic set is empty. Case three, suppose that case one does not apply and non-basic variable is not empty then the set of linear equations will have an infinite number of solutions. Um, basic variables x1, x2, and x3, but the non-basic variables are x4 and x5. So again, these three, x2, x3, are non-basic. These x4 and x5 are basic. 
Um, so the non base the non basic variables are non empty. So that means that we can have a set of uh, infinite number of solutions. So a summary of the Gauss Jordan method is shown to the right. The end result of the Gauss Jordan method will be one either case one, case two, or case three. So once you have completed the Gauss Jordan method, you can use this flowchart to decide if you have a unique solution, if you have multiple solutions or infinite number of solutions, or if you have no solution in your system. So we start by looking at this. So if you have a row with zeros to the left and a non-zero value on the right-hand side, then that means that you have a system with no solution. If the answer is no, then we need to find the set of basics and non-basic variables. If the set of non-basic variables is empty, then we have a unique solution. Uh, but if, if it is not empty, then we have an infinite number of solutions. So let's look at another example. Here I want to uh, solve this problem. And the question that I want to answer at the end is finding out if we have a unique solution, uh, an infinite number of solutions, or no solution. Okay, so I'm going to start here, setting up this matrix. Looks like uh, the pen is not working. Let's try it again. <laughs> 